see it's going to look like this. Okay, no charts on it. Um, you can click the chart button and you'll get a chart. You keep if you type into the chart and you just have to highlight the chart and type a symbol. Let's say EP and enter. Then it pulls up the symbol. If you need to know a symbol, you can go to the symbol button. So from the symbol button, you can go to symbol search, and it'll pull up our symbol search feature, and now you can find out, find the symbol you're looking for. All right? You can search by exchange. So let's say you wanted something from the CBOT on Globex. You could check that, and you could just hit search. This is going to give you all the symbols that are available from CBOT on Globex. Where you see it says f.us.zme, you don't have to put in uh, the the f.us. You just need to put in zme. So it's a it's default to futures based. We we do have some people that default their machine to stock based, which means they would put you know the s in front of it. Um, but in this case, you just have to put in the last three letters, or in this case, last four. So the f.us. You don't need just the last. So. If you wanted to put the ZME on a chart, you go to a chart, you type in ZME. And all you do is have the chart highlighted, and you can type anywhere. It actually winds up in this corner, but you don't have to type down there when you hit Enter. Okay, now to change the chart type, this is a bar chart. In the title bar of your chart, you right-click, and there's your chart choices. Bar, candlestick, constant volume, line, market profiles, point and figures, tick, T-Flow, which is our own proprietary chart, shows the volume inside of a bar. Uh, Hike and Ashy, and these are coming to CQG within a, you know, a month or so. Sub-minute bars, range bars, Ranko. Um, then there's uh, you know, other charts as well on the side over here that you can look at. You can play with them all. Um, to switch to a bar chart, let's just go in here or candle. To add additional charts, I can just come up to the corner and click the chart button. That will add an additional chart. To organize them quickly, I can go over to the Window button, and if I right-click, now in CQG, right-clicking always brings up a menu. So if you get stuck, right-click anywhere. You can right-click in the center of a screen. You can right-click on a button. If you left-click, you'll be choosing something from that list, or you'll be choosing that button. So right-clicking brought up this menu, and I'll say Arrange Horizontally. I can add as many charts as I want to, you know, and continue to do the same thing I did before. Right click and arrange tile. If I have a chart fully expanded though with the expansion button, I will not be able to add additional charts. No matter how many times I click chart, it won't add. So to get it back into the screen itself, I can just hit this between the exit and the question mark. I hit the shrink button. And it puts it back. Now to add a quote board, I left click quote. The different quote boards we have are standard quote board, which looks like this. You can resize it yourself, you know, put it anywhere on the screen you want to. Okay, and then you can type into the quote board your symbols. So EP for E mini S and P's. You want to see the beans, you can type Z C E. Uh, 10 years TYA, uh, 30 year bonds USA, etc. And you can find, again, find the symbols under the symbol search button. Now in CQG, what we can do, which is nice and it's a screensaver, is we can link, and you know, this is not the optimal setup. You can set it up any way you want to, but we can link this quote board to all of our charts. So the way we do that is this icon in the corner of the chart or in the corner of a quote board has some function. You left click on that icon and you'll get a menu. Here I can replicate, meaning I just duplicate whatever's, whatever I have you know, clicked on. So in this case, the quote board. I don't need another quote board, so I'll eliminate it. Uh, or I can come up here and I can go to link. So here I can link windows. If I choose Link Windows, you'll notice that there's now a square attached to my mouse. Whatever else I click is going to become the child of that parent. So this is the parent, and anything I click on will become the child, and I'll get a circle in the corner here. So if I click on all my charts, 
And then to get rid of that square, I right click. Okay? Now, if I change each one of these, let's say a five minute, a 15, highlight this chart, and I'm going to type 30 minute. And if I want to see a daily chart, I come to the last chart over here, and I'll just type a comma. I need to type comma D. So if I'm typing a minute chart, I can just put 30 and enter. But if I need to put a, a daily or weekly, I would type comma D, comma W, quarterly, comma Q, annually, comma A, um, monthly, comma M. <coughs> all right. So now um, once I have all these charts linked up, all I need to do is go back to the quote board, highlight the quote board, and if I click on a symbol, it's going to change all the charts to that particular symbol in different time frames that I had already designated. Now, if you look down here, you'll see a daily chart. And this is the front month contract. You'll notice that there's not a lot of trading because the contract rolled over sometime around, you know, sometime recently, actually. If I want this to be a continuation chart, we have functionality under the setup button. <laughs> you use the setup button quite a bit. So you go to the setup button. First, highlight the chart because that was quote preferences. So setup, chart preferences, left click chart preferences. And here under continuation, it's under no continuation, but I can choose to use standard, which means that it's just going to roll the contracts over and leave the gap between the expired contracts. Or if you're using a lot of studies in CQG, you probably want to use an active rollover that is going to equalize the closes. This way it removes the gap between the expired contracts. And if I hit apply, I guess that's not the expired contract. It was over here somewhere. But this is the chart. You know, now you can scroll back and see it all the way to the beginning of its you know, formation, the uh, tenure. Okay? To, to look back on a chart, just simply left click, hold the left click down, it becomes a hand, and you can drag back and forth on the chart. You can also compress the data by left clicking in the price bar and going up and down. I can expand the data at the bottom here in this what we call the time bar by left clicking, holding the left click down, and expanding or contracting the data. If I get my chart all messed up, I, I only need to hit the enter key, and it goes back to its default setting. Other core, core boards that we have that are a lot more useful, I'm not going to go through all the quote boards because we don't have time, but I will go down to the quote spreadsheet, which is probably the most commonly used spreadsheet if you're going to bring stuff into Excel. So you go to Quote Spreadsheet. Here you can type in a symbol. Then you can right-click on a symbol. And again, you get the menu from right-clicking, and you go to Customize the Columns. From Customize, you can choose anything in this list. And you know there's a hundred and some odd things you can choose. Um, and you can go ahead and you know choose open, high, low, whatever you want to put in there, and they'll be over here in this column. They'll be added to this sheet. I can reorganize them by simply left-clicking on them and moving them up or down in the list with these arrows. And then hit apply. Once I have my sheet set up with everything that I want, I can copy this to Excel and get a live link to Excel very easily by simply highlighting everything I want to copy, right-clicking, copy to Excel. Now if I open an Excel spreadsheet, I can paste in an Excel spreadsheet, and I get a live link into CQG. And each one of these actually has the code of how you would bring in a link for that particular, you know, that last quote today. Uh, last price, the high, the net change, the open price, and the low price. We can help you build. We have a lot of really cool uh, sheets already built, and our Excel specialist's name is Tom Hartle. Uh, Tom, I'm, I heard you mention something about forward curves. Now, we can do the forward curve in CQG. But some people like to see a forward curve built outside of CQG in Excel. It's a little more flexible. So um, he has sheets that, that are already built that can do that, and you simply need to call him and ask him for them, and he can send them to you. Any questions on the Excel functionality? 
So again, it's copy-paste only from a quote spreadsheet. So there's multiple quote boards, but only the quote spreadsheet will allow the copy-paste functionality. How did you come up with the quote spreadsheet again? Or like the box? Did you? Uh, yeah, the quote spreadsheet, you just go to the quote button. Ah, uh, okay. And then from the list, you can choose quote spreadsheet. Right there. Sorry. Okay. Great. Okay, so pointer tools. So if you go into a chart and you want to use a pointer tool, suppose you wanted to draw a trend line, you can right click in the center of the chart and you can go to pointer tools. So our pointer tool choices are all here. You have a currency pointer tool that can tell you how much it is from one point to another in terms of currency. Uh, you also have Fibonacci retracements, extensions, circles, etc. Um, speed lines, GAN lines, linear regressions, pitchforks, you know, you name it, we got it. So you can go to trend. Don't, your mouse is now a pencil. Pick a low point or a high point or wherever you want to start your trend line and left click there. Because of this magnet up here, it automatically will attach itself to the low of that particular bar. And then you can go to the next place where you want to go. And if notice, as soon as I get close, it'll snap right to the low of that bar. That's because of the magnet. And I left click again. And that draws your trend line. If you want to set an alert on this trend line, it's very easy in CQG. So the price is currently way below this trend line. But if I want an alert, I can just right click on this trend line. And anywhere, I can right click back here. It doesn't matter. Add price crossing light on true. Add price crossing line alert on trend, and I left click there. That's going to open up my alert window. There's nothing I need to do here because it's going to automatically beep. If I want to change what beep it'll make, so as soon as the price, because the price is below, it's going to go off if the price goes above the trend line. I do need to give it a name, and I could say, okay, this is my uh, TYA, you know, and then I could come in here and if I want a different sound under the actions. I could double left click here and choose different sounds. You can actually have an order entered if you were trading through CQG. But here's the sound, and you choose whatever sound you want from the list. Okay, if you don't want that alert on, you can either turn it off over here, or you can just right click and you can delete the alert. Now that's the same way you can set up any alert with um, trend line. So if I uh, draw a horizontal line, and all I have to do to do that is go into the price bar and left click at the price bar. And now I can have a horizontal line. When I get it to where I want, I can left click again, and it'll lock in and become a room. From here, I'm locked in at this high price. And again, right click on it, add price crossing line alert. If I want to get rid of any of these lines, I can go ahead and right click on the line itself and say <coughs> remove it. If I don't want my pointer tool anymore of trend line, I right click in the center of the chart in a blank area and I go to pointer tools and I can choose none. If I want cursors, of course, you can just left click and create a cursor that way. And then if you want to get rid of it, simply right click while it's gray. If you double left click by accident and lock it in, you'll need to either left click on it again to activate it and then right click, or you can right click in the center of the chart and remove it. If I want uh, both cursors up, I can come in here and go to cursors and say with crosshairs or without crosshairs. So I'll say with, and there's my cursor. Notice it will draw on the other charts as well. So it's a global cursor. That's an option in CQG. You can come down to the bottom, and you can right click and remove the global cursor feature. But what's nice, of course, is that you can, you know, follow along on another chart uh, and, you know, what happened on this particular bar. And I can look up on the five-minute chart and say, okay, on that bar, here's the breakdown of that bar by looking up here and see what happened. Okay. So global cursors. All right. Uh, let's go into... Um, 
I don't, are you guys going to be using the news at all or not? Because we do have a news feature as well. Yeah. yeah. News. Okay, so the news is that there's several different uh, levels of news. The, the Dow Jones Global Capital Markets News is our most extensive news feed. So if you want everything, you can get that. But if you want more specialized news feed, <coughs> Capital Markets will include all the news that you need. It's going to have all the agriculturals as well as all the financials. But if you don't need that extensive a news service, you can just use, you know, Commodity Dow Jones Energy News or Dow Jones Commodity News or Dow Jones Agricultural News. So you can specify the news more towards what you want. But just know that capital markets will include all of them. You can search or keyword in a news uh, as well by going into the filter and just saying, let's say we said shutdown because, uh, you know, we know we're currently in a shutdown. Now you'll get any news that, that, this is all the current news up here, but down below this thick line is anything that relates to the shutdown or has the word shutdown in it. Okay, and you can search by, you know, stock or, you know, whatever. You want to see something related to corn, type in the word corn, <coughs> and it'll bring up any articles that came up on corn. You can also search, uh, you can set up alerts for headline alert news, or you can search for, um, you know, past news. If you wanted to look at past news on corn, you could do that, and it would bring up, you know, uh, news from our archive. And you can go back as much as, uh, I think you can go back as much as a year or two years. By default, it's six months, so... That's our news feed. Uh, any, notice this window is actually out of page. So I could actually drag it off of this uh, where you have all of your uh, title bars. I can drag it off that and place it somewhere else on my screen. The way you get something out of page is you actually left click on that icon and you can go ahead and say window out of page. In this case it says window, uh, place window in page because it's already out. So if it's in page it has this title bar that is, you know, blue. If you're going to take it out of page, depending on how you've set it up, mine actually has this kind of paint title bar, but I think normally it's, uh, I think it's normally red. Yeah, that's right, red. So then you can come in and window out of page, and this title bar would be red. And that could be for anything. It could be for a quote board. You know, again, you can replicate, link, take it out of page, whatever you want to do, all by left-clicking on the icon in this upper corner. Okay, to add studies on a chart, we have a bunch of studies, and we can help you write studies. One thing about CQG, it's the help that you you really get a lot of help from CQG. So if you have some custom study that you read about somewhere, provided that we can find the code for it, because some code uh, for studies is proprietary, but if we can find the code, we'll reproduce it for you. You know, we'll help you, you know, get your system set up the way you want so that you're not, you know, busy writing code. Of course, some people like to write code in CQG because it's fairly easy, but... Um, if you don't want to do that, we can do that for you. So you go into studies for all of our regular studies, and there's tabs at the top. So basic studies are all included here. If you want to find out what something is, if you don't really understand Bollinger Bands, the, the abbreviation for Bollinger Band just adds it over into your toolbar over here so that you can quickly add it to a chart with a button. So by highlighting this button, left-clicking on it, it goes away or it comes back. So it appears right here left-click it again, and there's Bollinger Bands. If I want to understand Bollinger Bands, I can actually left-click on Bollinger Bands and the word Bollinger Bands and come down to the bottom and hit Info. So here in the Info, I get the Info screen, and it tells me all about Bollinger Bands um, as well as any parameters that I might have. Any questions on that help feature? The help feature, again, you just click on the Bollinger Band and you hit Info, and it brings up the info on Bollinger Bands. If you want to go through the list and see something else, you can. You don't understand candlestick formations? Here they are. Each one of these is explained where you see it's a different color. You can just click on that color, and it'll go to that particular uh, candlestick formation and describe it for you.
Chart analog overlay is one that a lot of people like to use, and that's right here. So if I click analog and open a chart, I can actually go to the left toolbar and click the analog button. And what will happen is I'm actually creating an additional chart on top of this. So let's say I wanted to do the USA on top of the TYA, which is the tenure. I actually have two charts. And I got a new button over here called Analock. It's currently locked, so the charts stay together. But if I unclick that, I can now move one chart or the other, and I can change the color of that particular chart. Okay, and then I can line them up and say, okay, how did the 30 years move compared to the 10 years? And was there any discrepancy between the two? And you can add more, of course. You just continue to hit the analog button, and it will create a third signal. And then you just type that set going. So five-year FVA and enter. And now I've got another chart on there, the five years. And I can right-click and change the color of that. Obviously, you wouldn't use candle maybe, but you could if you want to, but it's a little you know, more confusing. So now you have three sets of, you've got the five years, you've got the uh, 30 years, and you've got the 10 years. If you decide you want to move one of the others, you do have to right-click on that particular chart and say bring it to the foreground. And now I'll be moving that one. Okay, so that's chart analog overlay. That's in the study button. To add a study onto the chart, there's a couple ways that you can do it. So if you just have any chart like this tenure down in the corner, and I want to put a moving average on, I don't have a moving average in my button on the left. But I can add anything I want from these buttons over here simply by left-clicking the button. So if I left-click the button, I can add on a series of bands that I have created. If I want them removed, I can right-click on the button. So left-click adds it, right-click removes it. I can also right-click on the chart itself. So if I right-click on the chart and I say Add Study, and then I left-click to choose, it brings up my study box. So from here, the categories, you can choose different categories if you want to go straight to a category, but if you leave it on all, you can just type in, let's say I wanted moving average. Just start typing MA and moving average comes to the top of the list. I can left-click and add it to the chart. So there's a the moving average. I want to modify it. And any study in CQG, you modify or chart or anything by right-clicking. So right-click directly on the moving average, and it'll say Modify Moving Average. Then I left-click and choose from the list, and I get a Setup Study Parameters box. And here I can choose Simple, Smooth, Exponential, Weighted, Centered. You know, I can add, change the period, change the price that it's calculated on, open, high, low, close, anything in this list, or create my own thing, and then hit Apply. I can drive percent bands on there by simply putting in a percentage band in here, and it'll draw percent bands on this. So those are one percent bands surrounding the moving average. If I wanted to come up that way every time, I can hit set as defaults, apply, and OK. Now every time I remove or add that, it's going to have those bands. So if I right click and add a study, the moving average, add, it has the bands automatically on, and the default setting is now 30. You can do that with any study in CQG. And again, the studies can all be found under a button called Studies in the left toolbar. Custom studies are any study that you might create. You can see I've created quite a few custom studies. You may already have the one that you're looking for, so if you have a custom study that you're trying to do, we may already have it. Um, also, we've created some for you. There's correlation analysis here, and you can see that we have several correlations for you, crude oil, copper, uh, moving average, it's correlation to, a, to moving average correlation of the 10 years, you know, um, the pivot points, the old CQG pivot points, uh, you know, which were trader pivots from the pit. If you're interested in that, we already built those. And they start with CQG, and you can find them in here. If, again, if you need something else, let me know and I can create it for you. 
functions are all here. People that look at functions generally are looking to build their own formulas, although there's a couple of functions in there that will serve a purpose for you, for instance, the level function. So if you put the level function on, you can actually see the high and low of the X number of bars. So let's say I wanted to come here and I put the level on. This is probably a 20 period high low, but you go to modify and you got a 20 period of the highest price and the highest level and the lowest price and the lowest level. Okay, so currently we're making a new high right now. 20 period high, which is only the last 20 bars. All right, uh, the other thing that is, things that are found there are, are going to be there's traits, there's pointer tools, so you can put fast, quick buttons of your pointer tools. So if you're constantly using, you know, something like uh, Fibonacci, you can put the Fibonacci retracement on your toolbar and get a button over there. If you don't want any of these, you can left click and remove them. The other buttons are all going to be third-party vendors. So all of these other buttons that tabs you see come with a cost. So, you know, there's ATM, DeMarc, et cetera. People have heard of uh, DeMarc studies, um, and all of these are the same thing. They're all additional um, fees. Now, when you're looking at order book analytics, that is not an additional fee. So that actually analyzes what's in the book uh, you know, the pre-trade analysis, basically. So it's analyzing the bids and the asks. Um, and there's more additional studies under pre-trade as well that do the same thing, that analyze the pre-trade volumes. And then all the way at the end, you'll see Tom Joseph. You won't have these last two. You'll see Tom Joseph and Tom Joseph Elliott Wave is included at CQG, so that is not an additional feature. So you, if you want the Elliott Wave, you can see that. This gives you the wave count. If you're not familiar with the wave count, again, you can you can always right click and modify Elliott Wave, and you can also find info here. You just click on those three arrows, and it'll bring up the information on Elliott Wave. Sometimes after you first load CQG, because Microsoft no longer gives you the help file, you might get an error that tells you you need to get the file from Microsoft. There'll actually be a link in that error window that pops up, and if you follow the link and you know what type of you know operating system you have, Windows 7, 64-bit, you can just follow and get the file, and that will allow you to open up this file. If you have any trouble, call the CQG helpline number, which is 1-800-525-1085. We're open 24 hours a day, six days a week, and Sundays we have uh, email support all day. Okay? Uh, and so they'll, they can help you get the file if you can't get it. Anything that you need, you can always call 1-800-525-1085, and they can help you. No, okay. um, there's buttons over in the left toolbar that do the same thing that you left click here and you stretch back and forth or left click in the price bar and hold the left click down and stretch this way. The buttons over here do the same thing very slowly so you can see these little arrows. If you left click on the arrow one click at a time it will slowly expand. If you right click it will slowly contract. Same with these arrows here. Left click will scroll through the screen. It's just like dragging back and forth, but it does it slowly. Right click pushes it back to the front. Up or down, left click pushes it up or down. Right click pulls it higher. And then here, expansion and contraction. Okay, we'll go through. Do you need to go through some alerts? I mean, if you want to set up some time. You left click the alert button, you can see that there's condition alerts. Now here in a condition alert, let's suppose you wanted to be alerted that if a moving average crossed another moving average, you could set that condition up alert here. And we would help you do that because you'll have to build a small formula that says moving average cross above moving average so you knew. There's also price alerts that you can set up yourself. You just simply put the issue in, let's say EP, 
and it'll populate what the last is. So it's uh, currently 1661.50, and I can just type the price in here if I want. Uh, 1662.25. Okay, so now if it went up to 25, I would get an alert. I don't have to keep this alert window open. That will continue to work, so I can just close it out, and that alert is working. So if it trades 62.25, I'm going to get a little pop-up on the screen and possibly a sound if I have my sounds on. We do go into the alerts. What you probably want to do under a price alert is just under the actions window, you might want to set the sound to stop recording after a certain period of time. I have it set to one second. But by default, this is left to keep beeping. And if you go to lunch and there's other people in your office and it just continues to beep, you're going to come back from lunch and not have as many friends as you did before you left. <laughs> so. Okay, so those are the alerts. Um, there's multiple alerts in here. They all work kind of the same way. You've got price crossing line, alert, which I showed you. If you draw a trend line, you can always right-click on the trend line and put an alert on. Here my alert went off, 62.25, and this is what happens. You'll get a box, and if you had sounds, it would just continue to beep, but I put mine to turn off after one second, so I don't have any more sounds. And now to get rid of that, I can either, I can just, if I want to reset it so that it goes off again, I can click reset. If I want to just get rid of it, I can just close it out and it's off. The other alerts that we have are uh, study alerts where you can build, you can see I have a bunch of study alerts put in there. We can help you build those as well. So if you wanted an alert based on some uh, study, whether it would be a, you know the high crossing the Bollinger Band high or the closing price crossing a 50-period moving average or a 200-day moving average, whatever it might be, we can help you build that. It only takes a couple seconds. Uh, there's time alerts. You can set off a time alert if you want to. Let's say you wanted to be alerted at 7.29 uh, Central Time because there's a number at 7.30 every day. You could have that alert go off as well. There's also Trade System. Trade System is an additional feature in CQG. I don't know if you guys will be getting that or not. But with Trade Systems, you can actually, you know, uh, left click and add on. Oops, that's not a trade system. Let's see if I have one on here. Here's a moving average cross system. And what it'll do is it'll just give you an arrow where the moving average is crossed that tells it that you bought it. It shows you a line to show you how long you stayed in the trade, and then this X that's blue represents the exit for your buy, and then the X for the red represents the exit for the sell. And at the bottom, it'll tell you how much money you made or lost doing it. You can also <clears throat> put your mouse directly on an arrow and find out, you know, you took your buy signal, your exit was your reverse signal, and you made $16. You can simply change to a different Let's say you wanted to see it on crude. You type CLE and enter, and it'll automatically do it for crude. Again, it's a five-minute chart, so it'll take a second to bring it in, and there's your there's your uh, result. Again, this is an extra feature, so I don't know if you'll be getting it or not, but it's kind of a neat feature. You can also optimize that by right-clicking on the histogram down below and going to optimize. The optimization feature is nice because you can run through all the moving averages and find out which one you should use. So should I use a three period all the way up to, let's say, a 21 uh, for my fast? And I could go a five period, you know, or a 10 period to a, you know, 50 for my slow. And then just hit close and hit start. And it'll run through the iterations for you. The blue line's current calculation, top line underneath that is the best result. So right now it's currently telling you that not many of moving average crosses are working. So it's got to, you know, it have, takes a couple of minutes to run through this n number of combinations, and at the end you'll find out which one worked better over the time. Again, it's curve fitting, but, you know, um, at least you get an idea of what has worked in the past.
All right. Uh, t if you need any time in sales, there's a time in sales button. There is a nice feature in time in sales. If you right click on the button, you can choose different time and sales features. You can choose. You want to choose portfolio. Regular time and sales is going to be, you know, here you want to see this. Usually I'll shrink it over like that so I can scroll up and down easily and see how many traded at a particular price. But if you want to see portfolio time and sales, um, you, you right click on the time and sales button and you go to portfolio time and sales. So here's the E-mini S&Ps for instance and you have to create these by right clicking at the top here. You right click up here, you'll see the E-mini S&Ps and you'll, you're able to choose a different contract. I think I had a bad symbol in there and now I got a problem. I'm in an alpha version unfortunately and occasionally with alpha versions we run into issues where we freeze up which is why it's not in the public camps. Uh, all right, let's try escape here. No. Sorry, I'm going to have to kill CQG. This feature um, obviously is not working well in uh, the alpha version, and now I'll have to let them know. Okay, to set up new pages uh, in CQG at the up on the top side, it hasn't come up yet, but in the top side there's a button called page. And you can right click on that page button at any time and you can save a page that you currently built, or you can right click on it and you can create new pages. There's no limit to the number of pages that you can create. So, you know, you can go ahead and just keep on creating. If you don't want those pages any longer, you can go into our page manager, which is also available by right clicking on the page button and delete any number of pages that you want. So if you left click on page, you can see I've created a lot of pages in here. Okay, I can go to any one of these pages at any time. So if I left click on that page, it's going to bring that particular page up. I can also go into my, uh, under the pages and I can create new pages. Sorry, it's still coming up. Okay, so if I want a new page, I right click on page and I choose new page. Okay, here I can set up a whole new series of charts and if I want to save that page, I can just hit the save button if I want to rename that page, I can right click on page and go to rename. You know, and I could call it, you know, four charts or whatever and hit OK. And that's page 48. It tells you up here in the corner, page 48. Um, if I need to access that page, I can come in here. If I make a mistake on this page, since I've saved this page, if I make a mistake and accidentally X out a couple of charts, I can left click page and go back to page 48, choose it again and say go to and it'll revert back to that page. Okay, so to create a new page, right click, go to new page. Create the page however you want with quote boards, anything that you might want to have. Then hit the save button. You can access the page anytime by left clicking on page. And if you have more pages than it's able to be viewed here like I do, you can go to more pages at the bottom. That's also going to allow you to access the page managers. From here you can move pages up or down in the list and you can also delete pages or renumber them or rename them. You can also scroll through the pages with this plus or minus button 
I don't think many people use that, but you can just left click and it goes forward, and if you right click, it goes backwards. Or the other way around, I'm sorry. Right click is forward, left click is backwards. You can add fast click access buttons for a particular page. So if you come down, if you go to this toolbar right here between wherever it's gray, which is usually to the left of the page button, you just right click in that area. That brings up your toolbar manager. From here you can go to the pages section. And right here, this is to access any of these buttons at the top. If you have too many buttons, you can go to the add remove here, wherever these arrows are. And there's all those buttons. You don't want them? Left click and it'll remove it from the top. You can also left click to add it back. So under pages, you can find the page that you want to put on there, all right? And this is a page I use every day, right? And I said here it is because, you know, I have so many pages I can't find stuff. I just left click on that button and it'll actually add page 35 right there. Now if I want to name it something other than 35, I can come down here to rename and even rename the button. And I can say main. And okay. I just call it main. Now it says main and it actually will say that on my toolbar as well, main. So if I want to access my main page, I just left click main and it goes immediately to my main trading page. Uh, I think we've covered most of the uh, basics of CQG. I can go into a lot more technical if you want to, like formula writing, but maybe that's a little much for today and we could do, uh, do it another session or something if you want to go into formula writing. It's up to you. What do you guys want to do? Uh, You, I'm sorry, did you see enough or you want to? Yeah, we're, we're okay. We don't need to see the programming now. Thanks. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions on anything that you saw here? Um, I know you said you wanted forward curve, so I'll show you a forward curve. Here's a crude oil chart. And if you actually right-click at the top of the chart in the title bar, Here's where you choose your chart types, but you can also come down here to forward curve. So this is the crude oil, and if I click forward curve, I'm going to get the forward curve chart. It might take a minute to pull in. There it is. Okay, so there's the crude oil uh, forward curve chart, and I can add in what was what did it look like one day ago? What did it look like one month ago? And you can barely see the difference here. What did it look like one year ago? Okay, so you can see the other lines there. It wasn't much different from a day ago or whatever, but a, a year ago it was quite different. Any questions on the forward curve or not really? So again, to get a forward curve, open up the chart that you're trying to do the forward curve of, the crude oil, right click, go to forward curve. You want a yield curve, you know, you'd have to obviously be on an instrument that, you know, had yield, but you could right click up here and go to the yield curve. And you're your instruments are at the bottom, so you got your two-year, you got your uh, the thirty-year, uh, you know, the big bond. You've got the um, this is the ultra bond. You've got the five-year, the ten-year, and then you got the the normal thirty-year bond. And the same thing applies. You can put you know one day, one month, 